All right, well, welcome back. Matt and I um, are really excited because we've been doing a lot of geocaching. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, it's actually become uh, quite a fun hobby for us. We've mm -hmm. been getting out, doing, great. doing a lot of getting out and walking a lot. Yes. Which has been good. And uh, Matt really enjoys the intrigue of uh, following the GPS to the final location. And more importantly, he's, he's an expert at finding very well hidden caches. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm really good. So, um, so far we've been using my iPhone, uh, the geocache app on the iPhone, which has been pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of times where we've been um, out of uh, cell phone range, and so the, the, the app doesn't work. So it works well if you're in an area where you've got good, reliable um, cell phone reception. But once you get outside that, uh, you it's non-functional. And Matt was looking for a few caches and um, had no signal. But uh, with the hint, he was able to hone in and find them. So pretty good that way. So the other thing we've been using is the Garmin e -Trex, And this is an old one. I think this goes back to 2004 when we did our first geocache when uh, Matt was in Cub Scouts and um, it was pretty exciting that first cache that we found. This is a little frustrating for us in that the screen is a little small, small and it's black and white and um, but it works well mm -hmm. and it good. certainly works when this doesn't work. So those are our two tools so far but um, Matt has really gotten into this quite a bit and so um, we thought we would surprise him and we added another tool to the kit. Yes. And I'm going to let Matt unbox this. But the cool thing about this, so this is the uh, Magellan Explorist GC, GC standing for geocache. And uh, this is one of a number of GPS units out on the market that um, can go basically pull it out of the box and start geocaching with it right away. So there's a bunch of caches that are preloaded on this and uh, Matt's going to do an unboxing for us and then we're going to pick the camera up and we're going to spend the uh, couple of hours doing some geocaching and every time we say we're going to go get a couple of caches so this is t typical <laughs> of typical of Matt we'll say let's go do two and as we're driving he said yeah that'll be great we can do two maybe three or four so he always adds mm -hmm. two on to what we're going to do so let me just go over the quickly the details of this and then we'll let Matt unbox this guy. So this is the Magellan Explorist GC. Um, high sensitivity GPS unit. It has a worldwide base map. This unit uses AA batteries. It is waterproof to the IPX standard. It is WAAS capable. It is GPX capable. It allows paperless geocaching, which is kind of cool. And um, it is able to connect to your uh, computer via high-speed uh, USB. And if you go on their website, you can download the uh, uh, communication package for either PC or Mac. Our family is uh, Mac-based, so I've already downloaded that, and Matt and I will play with that this evening. But the cool thing is, what I liked when I looked at this online is one thing that Matt likes a lot is being able to look at the hint, photo, and description of the cache. And you can't do that with the Garmin e -tracks. You can do it with the iPhone app. So that's been a fun thing. We'll be stuck and we'll pull up the hint or we'll review the hint and suddenly we're able to find the cache. Find the cache. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be a nice, nice feature, I think, having that capability with us. Now, before Matt opens this up, what are these two guys? Um, these are some trackables and uh, a travel bug that we got at uh, some geocaches. Um, this one we found at Mount Calvary Cemetery in Port Portland, Oregon. How far um, has he traveled? All the way from Portland? Port from Washington. From Washington. He's traveled Is that where Washington. he started? Was, yeah, in was in Washington? So he started in Washington. We picked him up in Portland well, at uh, Mount Calvary Cemetery, Cemetery yeah. and now he's in Sisters. Sisters. So we're gonna find a good cache for him. And it was in like a, a rock wall, 
Um, and it was really, it was really well hidden, and uh, it was a good little child bug to pick up. So, glad so we, about we've that. we've been to a couple of rock wall caches, yeah, which are kind of fun because a lot of little spaces to look for, but uh, you found that one pretty easily. Yeah. So that was a. So we're gonna move that guy along. Yeah. So we're gonna move those two along. So that'll be in our bag today. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, I've been pretty excited about uh, getting this. GPS unit because I think it'll enhance our experience and um, we'll let Matt unbox it. I think a key thing Matt said with this, um, we found this close to our home and it's interesting if you get into geocaching and look on the computer on geocaching.com and just look at your home or maybe you're traveling and just plug in your hotel address You'd be surprised how many little geocaches are around there. So we're pretty there, excited so. about taking this unit with us. Um, we're going to be traveling to Arizona, and uh, Matt and I think we'll have a lot of fun on lunch stops and in the evening uh, hotel stops, going out for a quick walk and grab some caches. Yeah. All right, Matty, unbox it. All right. Let's take a look at what we got. This, I think this is a nice feature. This lets you know how serious they are about um, getting good performance. They've included not just regular batteries, but uh, lithium batteries. So let's see what we have here. We've got a uh, user manual in three languages. So we'll take a look at that. We're actually gonna test this um, right out of the box and see if we can do it without looking at the manual. We'll of course use the manual, but um, it's advertised um, on the web as very user friendly and just pick it up and start using it. And uh, we're just gonna give that a try. So we've got the user manuals, lithium batteries, the communications cable. It's a nice little package. Let's yeah. take it out of that bag. And I'll open this up for you. These are the batteries. So this is pretty easy to use right out of the box. Um, Matt turned it on and he's going through the setup steps, uh, setting the time zone. So on the screen, what I'm seeing right now, there's five icons that you can circle around with the uh, little rubberized toggle. And the big center one is a uh, very familiar icon, the uh, geocaching.com icon. So Matt, just go ahead, push that and see. So the satellite acquisition was very quick and rapid. We've got a solid four bars, which is the maximum. And um, we're gonna run inside real quick and get the local caches loaded on this and then head out on the trail. Yeah. Sound good? Sounds good. So Matt very quickly s snapped through all the setup features uh, and we're good So to we go. Um, updated the drivers and plugins and we are successfully logged into geocaching.com um, under Matt's account and he is um, selecting some geocaches in the area. So it's as simple as clicking send to my GPS, download, and then you get a message that says download has finished. All right, there you have it, the Magellan Explorist GC, a very nice unit that is dedicated to geocaching. One nice feature that I like is they take this seriously and they give you premium lithium batteries. They also give you a 30-day premium membership to geocaching. It is downloading geocache data seamlessly via the USB cable plugged into our laptop, and we are ready to get out on the road and have some fun geocaching. Matt, how did it work? It worked really good. You got your caches? Yeah, we got them. There's a whole list of them that I downloaded, so we're doing good here. Time to get out on the road? Yeah, time to go. You ready to geocache? Yeah. Let's get on it's it. Have a good day. A little easier than the Garmin? Yeah. Yes, way easier. N not that Garmin's are bad GPS's, no. they're very good. Yeah, they're we just had one that was from 2004, black and white. So this is a little easier for geocaching. Yeah. All right, I'll let you look. All 
All right, well, this is the site of the old Scanlon Railroad that uh, brought forest products through this area many, many, many years ago, back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. I don't know the exact dates of the railroad, but if you look behind me here, you can see where the track went, which is now pulled up, and we're at the site of an old bridge. And um, if you look back this way, you'll see the road going in that direction and the bridge crossed over right here. The bridge is now long since gone. Not sure of the exact dates. I believe that was back in the 40s or 50s. Um, I can get online and annotate that uh, up above. But uh, Matt's on the hunt for a geocache. And again, we're using the new Magellan Explorist GC or geocache and it's working great. Well, we found the uh, geocache. It's a small film can and it's camouflaged with black tape, probably uh, Gorilla Tape from what it looks like and it's uh, pretty weathered and definitely showing the effects of long exposure to the sun. I'm not sure if it's where it's supposed to be or not. We had a little hard time finding it. Um, and without the exact details of the cache, I'm going to put it back where we found it. So my sense is it's supposed to be under one of these big uh, support pieces, but I found it uh, on the ground in some pine needles nestled in some rocks. So with respect, we're going to put it back where we found it. But uh, this cache may need to be uh, evaluated by his owner for some uh, maintenance. Thumbnail on that. What's going on, Matt? Um, the logs here, they're like all wet because uh, it's been here from the weather and the snow and the rain. Um, so we're going to use our own uh, right in the rain paper and uh, use a log out of that. So I'm suspecting this log was not uh, weatherproof paper that they used? No. no? Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll make a little log entry? Yes, we will. All right.